Does your FJ have bigger tires and leave you feeling like you need more power? Then it's probably time to re-gear. Hey there everyone, welcome back to FJX 2000 Productions and another episode of Let's FJ. My name is Hayden and today we're tackling a big topic that impacts power, fuel economy, and off-road capability, gearing. If you've lifted your FJ and slapped on bigger tires, like 33s, 35s, or even 37s, you've probably heard about or considered re-gearing. But is it really necessary? And if so, what is the right gear ratio for your build? Let's break it all down. Before we dive in, a huge shout out to all of you who've subscribed and supported the channel. Hitting 30,000 subscribers is absolutely mind blowing. I was just re-watching a video from a few years back when we hit 3,000 subs. It's wild how far we've come. Drop a comment below and let me know what kind of content you'd like to see next. Look forward to reading your comments, and now let's get started. Starting with the basics, what even is a gear ratio? Your differential gears take power from the propeller shaft and transfer it to the wheels. The gear ratio determines how many times that shaft spins for every full rotation of your tires. Stock automatic FJ cruisers come with 3.73 to 1 gears, while manual transmission FJs get 3.91 to 1. That means the drive shaft spins 3.73 or 3.91 times for every wheel rotation. With manual FJs coming with lower gears from the factory, that does change their performance and driving characteristics, which I dive deeper into in another video of mine if you want to check it out. But we will cover the difference that lowered gear ratio makes in this video too. Now those factory ratios are perfectly fine for the stock 31.6 inch tires, but once you move up to larger tires, you're effectively raising your gear ratio, which puts more strain on the engine and makes the FJ feel sluggish. Think of it like riding a mountain bike in high gear. It takes way more effort to get moving. Same thing happens when you go to 35s or 37s without a gear swap. So do you need to re-gear? Well, it depends on what you're feeling when you drive. If you notice slower acceleration, hunting for gears on the highway, worse fuel economy, or a loss of power when towing or off-roading, then it may be time to re-gear. You just have to decide how much you feel the larger tires are affecting your FJ's drivability and performance. Personally, I haven't re-geared yet. I've run both 315-70R17 and 255-85R17 tires, both around 34 and a half inches, or what most people would call a 35. Even without re-gearing, I've daily driven the FJ, road tripped across states, and wheeled in places like Moab and Colorado. So do you have to re-gear for 35s? No, but it definitely helps. Let's talk about why. So what is the best gear ratio to upgrade to? The two most popular choices for re-gearing include 4.56 and 4.88 gears. When you do the gear swap, unless you have a two-wheel drive FJ, you will need to throw those new gears in both the front and rear differentials, since they need to match. Otherwise, your front and rear tires would spin at different speeds. Not good. But as much as I wish there was a simple one-size-fits-all answer to which gears you should choose, the 456s or the 488s, there are many factors to consider when making that decision. These include the tires you run with their diameter, width, and weight all factored in, the FJ's static weight, since a stock FJ and a heavily modded FJ weigh quite different, the type of off-roading you do, and your driving style, your average high speed for highway driving, plus how much highway driving you do in general, and what elevation you live at. First, let's look at the 456 gears. Between 456s and 488s, the 456 gears are the higher of the two gear ratios. I recommend running 456s if you're running 33 to 35 inch tires, have a built up rig, but also use your FJ often as a daily driver or for higher speed highway driving. When you upgrade the gears, you will notice additional low end acceleration and torque and the FJ will feel less sluggish and closer to how it felt stock, which is what most owners are looking for. The additional torque is also a great benefit off-road. It means you'll have better control when in first gear and low four-wheel drive like you typically would be for rock crawling. But when you re-gear and drive at higher speeds, your RPMs will start to run noticeably higher. Luckily, you can use formulas like this to help figure out what your RPMs would be for highway driving. 
For example, let's run an automatic transmission FJ Cruiser in fifth gear on 35 inch tires with the stock gear ratio. At the shown speeds are the corresponding RPMs. Now let's upgrade to 456 gears. You can see that each RPM level is now higher than it used to be, around a 22% increase. This ultimately means your engine will be burning more fuel and working harder to turn those tires at higher speeds. You can run similar calculations for manual FJ cruisers, which have a taller sixth gear. And interestingly enough, they run more efficiently at high speeds than the automatics. Their calculations are shown here, but these lower numbers mean manual FJs can run 35s or other tire upgrades much better than auto FJs can. Just something to keep in mind. But what does this do to overall fuel economy? It really depends. If you're mostly doing city driving and not getting up to highway speeds, then there's a chance, depending on your driving style, that you notice an increase in fuel economy with 456s. But the more high speed driving you do, or the more you smash that skinny pedal since you're having fun with your newly improved acceleration, you'll probably be burning more fuel. So I would expect most people who re-gear to notice a drop in one mile per gallon or more. Moving on to 488 gears, this lower gear ratio is really going to be better for owners who want to build more of a dedicated off-road rig and are willing to sacrifice their high-speed drivability. I recommend going with 488s if you're running 35 to 37 inch tires and don't plan on using your rig as a daily or you don't plan on doing much highway driving. The 488 gears will give you even more torque compared to the 456s, making them a better option for off-roading and low-end control. But you may also consider 488s if you're needing some extra power for towing or you're noticing a drop in power due to living at higher elevations. The 488s at highway speeds, however, end up pushing the engine higher into the power band, meaning you'll be running even higher RPMs on average than with the 456s. Compared to stock RPMs, you should expect around a 30% increase with 488s. And this table shows a comparison of where those RPMs would be compared to the numbers we went over earlier. On average, to help maintain the health and longevity of your engine, transmission, and other components, you want to try and keep the RPMs below the 2400 mark while cruising, meaning 488s on 35s at 80 miles per hour just becomes too much. But usually, if you're re-gearing, you're looking for those off-roading gains. Who cares about highway MPGs, right? The additional torque from the lower gear ratios is the real game changer when it comes to getting larger tires rolling, even in demanding off-road situations. But again, this is where re-gearing is highly subjective and not an exact science. Everyone's situation is completely unique and individual to them. Everyone will have an opinion based on their own personal experiences, and that's great. But in general, 456 gears are the more balanced option if you drive the FJ both on and off-road, especially at highway speeds, while the 488s are going to do better for larger tires and more weight, especially if you do more off-roading or towing and increased torque is necessary. I will briefly mention the 529 gear ratio. While not a popular choice among FJ owners, if you have 37s or larger tires and specifically use your rig as a dedicated off-roader, these gears offer the maximum torque and low speed control available for our Toyota differentials. Yet, all the consequences of re-gearing that we already discussed are magnified that much more with 529s, making them not an ideal choice for daily driving or highway speeds. But there are other things I want to discuss that you should consider when going to any new gear ratio. An FJ specific item to keep in mind with gear selection is what year FJ Cruiser you have. The earlier 07 to 09 FJs feature a smaller 8 inch rear differential. Then in 2010, FJs underwent a slight mechanical overhaul with an upgraded powertrain including the newer 4 liter V6 engine and a beefed up 8.2 inch rear differential. Though an extra 0.2 inches may not seem like a lot, this upgraded rear end did a lot for the dependability of the FJ. Early FJs, including my own 2007, were prone to having weak rear differential gears, and teeth could break off as a result. It's not known if those early 07s had just received a bad batch of parts at the factory or what, but later 8.2 inch rear diffs never really had the same issues and the upgrade was much needed. 
That 8-inch diff had been utilized on earlier, lighter, and less powerful Toyota vehicles since the 80s and 90s, so upgrading it for the modern FJ Cruiser, which is not only a heavier vehicle, but also produces more horsepower and torque than past Toyotas, was a much needed improvement. The 8.2 inch diff increased the size of the ring gear, pinion shaft, carrier bearings, and other components to make for a stronger rear end overall. Why does this matter when re-gearing? Well, anytime you lower your gear ratio, specifically from OEM gearing to something like 456s, the way that is achieved is by adding more teeth to your gears, usually the pinion gear. The more teeth you add, the smaller the teeth have to be in order to fit. Therefore, many people say you should only run 456 gears on the earlier 07 to 09 builds, but you can run 456s or 488s on the 2010 and up years with the larger 8.2 inch rear diff. The rationale is that the 8 inch diff is too small for 488 gears, whose teeth have to be just that much smaller in order to fit, and ultimately with smaller teeth, you start losing gear strength. Not saying it cannot be done, as it certainly can, but some folks who have used aftermarket 488 gears in those 8 inch 07 to 09 FJ diffs still manage to break the gears if they wheel it hard enough. And that's really the deciding factor, how you drive your vehicle. If you like to off-road hard and find yourself slamming down that skinny pedal to get through obstacles, then you're probably more likely to be breaking gears regardless of which ones you run. In which case, if you have an earlier FJ, those 488 gears are probably not a good idea. But if you spend most of your time on the road or doing mild off-roading and you take it easy on the trails, then who knows, you'd likely be fine with the 488s. Some professionals I've talked to in the industry claim these aftermarket gears, if installed and broken incorrectly, should be just fine for slow speed and careful off-roading, even with 8-inch differentials. But if you're really into high-speed off-roading and you abuse your rig, putting it through too much stress, then you'll break gears regardless of the gear or diff size. Alright, so you've decided on the gears you need, but how do you actually re-gear your FJ? Here are your options. Number one, the DIY re-gear. You can buy the gears themselves as well as an install kit and try to do it yourself, but this is not recommended unless you're experienced. Setting up gears requires precision shimming, backlash adjustments, and torque specs, along with specialty tools to make the measurements. Mess it up and you're in for a bad time. Improper performance and premature failure of the gears can result if things go wrong, so be careful. Number two, you can have a professional do the install. This is the best option for most people. Let the experts figure out all the hard stuff and do the install of those parts themselves. But expect to pay a pretty penny for labor costs since this is a bigger job for sure. Or, number three, you can utilize a company like East Coast Gear Supply, who offers complete pre-built front differentials or rear third members with the gear of choice installed already, so you just have to swap out the whole assembly, which is a much simpler job. You can even send your OEM front diff and rear third member back as a core for them to use in the future and you'll get some money back. So just do some research and find what works best for you, your skill level, and your wallet but probably the most exciting thing to consider if you're swapping out differential gears anyways is that you have the option of throwing in a locker upgrade. The FJ Cruiser had an available electronic locking rear differential from the factory, but if your FJ never came with one, now is your chance to install something like an air locker or e-locker. FJs were never offered with a front locking differential, but upgrading the gears gives you a great excuse to add one. Keep in mind that installation of an air locker will also require additional parts like an air compressor, wiring for the switches, and air lines to make it all work. Even the e-locker will need new wiring and switches, as would be expected. A quick note about the front locker is that you'll be utilizing it on an independent front suspension setup, not a solid axle like a Jeep, and therefore the risk of binding and parts breaking is much higher. It's usually recommended to only use the front locker when absolutely necessary and only when driving with the tires pointing straight. If you have the wheel cranked and the axles are bound up and then you switch on that front locker for the extra traction, you could easily snap a CV axle and your day would become much worse. Just something to keep in mind. 
the final thing I will mention is that if you're looking to re-gear, you wheel hard, you want the strongest rear diff possible, and you don't care about keeping the stock FJ's rear diff, you should look into upgrading the whole axle to something like a Dana 60. The differential in this is equivalent to a 9.75 inch diff, which is a sizable upgrade over stock. And companies like East Coast Gear Supply sell entire pre-built axles with your chosen gear ratio installed, so you can install the whole thing relatively easily. This would handle 37 inch or larger tires with 488 or 529 gears no problem. This would also be a great option if your OEM rear axle is starting to rust out and isn't worth upgrading. A whole new axle would be sweet and give you a lot of peace of mind. So bottom line, if you're running 33s, 34s, 35s, or even 37s and larger, re-gearing is one of the best upgrades you can do for power and performance. Whether you go with 456s or 488s, you'll be bringing your FJ back to life. This video is not sponsored, but after several phone calls to different companies, I found the folks over at East Coast Gear Supply to be very knowledgeable about gearing on Toyotas, and they had lots of helpful info to give me while I researched this video. It never hurts to give the pros a call and see what they recommend for your specific build, but I hope this video has been helpful and gives you a better idea of what your FJ might need. But what do you think? Have you regeared your FJ? And what ratio did you go with? Drop some comments down below and let me know what your setup is and what has worked for you. As always, I appreciate you watching my videos and supporting the channel. So until next time, keep on FJ cruising and take care.